Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. If you're loving what you're hearing on the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, go out and tell two friends today. Show them how easy it is to subscribe to the show. The Real Estate Espresso Podcast can be heard on more than 20 different platforms, and wherever you listen to podcasts, you're sure to find the Real Estate Espresso Podcast. Go spread the love around. Why keep all this goodness to yourself? On today's show, we're talking about stress. The dictionary defines stress as a state of mental or emotional strain or tension resulting from adverse or demanding circumstances. I personally find that definition to be rather useless. Using a related word or a synonym to describe a word in a definition is not that helpful. So I've developed my own practical definition, which I think is more useful. I'm going to share it with you now. Stress is that emotion we experience when there's a gap between expectation and reality. I mean, think about it. You told your spouse or partner that you'd be home by six, but you left the office 10 minutes later than you planned, and now you're stuck in traffic, and it looks like you'll be half an hour late. There's a special dinner waiting for you when you get home, and all you can think about is how late you are, and how dinner is going to be cold, and your partner is going to be disappointed. That is stressful. You have a gap between expectation and the reality. There's only two variables in this equation, expectation and reality. Some people will try to cut off other drivers in traffic by driving aggressively, You can probably shave about two minutes off your trip if you try really hard. But big deal, now you're only 28 minutes late. If that happens to me, I call my wife on the phone and let her know that I've hit traffic and there's no way I'll be there by six. We'll exchange loving words for a few minutes and the stress is gone. All I did is reset the expectation. I know this is a trivial example. What do you do when there's a second traffic jam, which will result in being even later, and now you're running low on fuel and you need to make a detour to get fuel? The stress is back. Not only that, but resetting the expectation for the second or third time feels like your credibility is falling fast. So what do you do? Well, there's still the same two variables, expectation and reality, nothing else. Where was the problem? Did you fail to set the right expectation about being home by six? Well, maybe. You set expectations based on a set of assumptions. You assumed traffic would be normal. You assumed you would not run out of fuel. You assumed that you wouldn't be held up getting out of the office. As real estate investors, we often make predictions based on a set of assumptions. We assume that economic conditions will continue. We assume that materials will be available when you need them. You assume that labor will be available to work on a project when you need them. You assume that demand for your product will stay consistent between the start of construction and completion. You assume that there won't be a global pandemic resulting in government restrictions on movement, which will cause your customers to vanish temporarily. All of these assumptions may or may not turn out as you expect. Does that make you unreliable? Well, not necessarily. If you're continuously making optimistic projections and not learning from them, then you might be unreliable. But if you're clear on your assumptions and those assumptions are reasonable, then all you have is a gap between expectation and reality. You can sometimes overcome the reality by being a good risk manager and by being resourceful and creative. I'll give you another example. I know that flights are frequently delayed. If you check luggage, and you risk missing a connection, you don't have the flexibility to change to another flight. But all possible, I travel with cabin baggage only, so I preserve the option of changing flights. When I traveled to Houston a week ago, I flew a day earlier than necessary. I could have flown the same day and made the scheduled meeting time. But as it turns out, the mayor changed the scheduled time of the meeting on less than 12 hours notice. I would have been completely stressed if I had cut it close. And when the time change was announced, we could easily accommodate the change. It was a non-event. We got a quote for 14 weeks lead time for some critical materials on a construction project. A component substitution changed that reality without having to change the expectation for the delivery of the project. Now sometimes it goes the other way, and all that's left is to reset the expectation. Holding the gap internally is enormously unhealthy for you, though. You end up shouldering the stress. But in the meantime, you might also be lowering your trust with investors and possibly violating securities laws by failing to disclose bad news. We all experience stress from time to time because we all experience gaps between expectation and reality. It's not a question of whether these gaps will arise. That's not the secret to living a stress-free life. The key to managing your stress can be found in managing your own expectations and managing the expectations of others. If you do that on top of being a great risk manager, you have the opportunity to live a fairly low-stress life in an otherwise high-stress environment. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.